We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your host, Spicy Mari, and joined with me in the G spot. Usually that's guest spotlight, but today it is the gentleman spotlight. Hey. <laughs> we have Stevie Rome Green Jr., who's a musician, comedian, writer, and actor from North Carolina. Atlanta is where he met his fellow group members of Dormtainment. Dorm Those are the homies. The group has massed over a million followers in the past eight years, working with True TV, Comedy Central, Kevin Hart's LOL Network and YouTube Red. He loves going out, eating, and a solid nap. I love how you included your dating yeah, yeah. Um, profile in yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Influenced by yeah, greats sure. like Eddie Murphy, Chris Rock, and Dave Chappelle, he hopes he can be and leave behind the legacy as big as them. Boom. So that part, okay. I feel like in, in my heart you're already as big as them, Rome. Oh, I've known you for a long time. I've got to see you know your career grow and grow. It is climbing, and you. Well, you'll probably surpass them. I give you like two to three years. Here's the thing. If my bank account can surpass theirs, and that's, <laughs> that's what really matters. I don't even care about the fame part. I need the financial part. But no, nah, yeah, those are uh, those are the greats, man. So I look up to them. Well, so, we're yeah. going to talk about some um, male finances in a second, too, because uh, sure. I'm going to make you reveal it all. Today's oh, wow. episode is why he won't commit. Mm. And this is a burning question for a lot of women who are out here dating okay. and wanting to understand you know, when they get into these situationships yeah. that they think are going to change or they get into these, you know, obstacles or, you know, yeah, when a man yeah, lets yeah. them know up front. So I'm going to crack you open. But okay. in order to warm you up, I've got to make you throw a little spicy dicey over here. Okay. And, <laughs> okay. and that's going to make you give it all to me, the naked truth. All right. So all grab right. these two dice. Whatever grab, both it, of them? grab both of them. Okay. Whatever it lands on, that's what you're going to have to do. And you have to do two things. Okay. There's, whatever two it lands on, Those face up. We're going to make you do those things. Do, do, like roll them here? Yeah, or? roll them. Let's see what it lands on. Uh, crush. crush. Okay. And what's the other one? Uh, 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 oh, I what it lands on? What it lands on? Take, Take a, a sip. sip. Okay. All right. Perfect. Because there's tequila in this cup. Boom. <laughs> Boom. So the first one is crush. crush. So this show is all about like self-love, understanding yeah. yourself. S-P-I-C-Y stands for self, passion, intimacy, communication, and learning to say yeah. yes. Yeah. So because it landed on crush, you have to reveal this about yourself, okay? What was the first crush of your life and how that relationship turned out? The first crush of my life was, I remember I had a crush on a woman in high school named Lucy. Lucy, you like ladies with L's. Because there's Lucy. another L you had a crush on. I okay. did. <laughs> and Lucy, in high school, I was a, a little a rotund. I would like to say not big, not fat, Ooh, but rotund. Lady, he has a vocabulary and, too. Uh, voluptuous is what I like to call myself. <laughs> but <laughs> juicy, so juicy. She, I was juicy, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, I didn't have the confidence mm -hmm. to really ask her out or do anything like that. And then one day I finally worked up the courage and was like, hey, you want to like hang out or something? And she said, uh, no, she's okay. Uh, Ooh, but it's okay. Burn. I was like, you know what? That was just the first obstacle in life, first hurdle you got to go through when you when you when you figuring out your dating life, when you figuring out what you like. But I continued to like her anyway because she just I don't know she had a little hood in her, and I like I kind of <laughs> liked that at the okay. time. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, that was my first crush. That was my my first. And crush. you met it when you got rejected. And I got rejected. Did you give up on her though? Like, or did you keep um, asking her out? Did no, you no. Ever after succeed? a while, I I grew. I grew to just accept that we were better. It's just, we, she was cool. So mm -hmm. we, were, we, were, we were friends. Like we ended up being friends. And uh, yeah, and then we left high school. And that was pretty much the last time I seen her. So okay. you know how that goes. Well, yeah. your other um, dice was that you got to take a sip. Take ah! a but before you take that sip, you got to do Never Have I Ever. So okay. Never Have I Ever had a threesome. Do I put... What, how does this work again? I put... <laughs> I put a finger up. Like, do I raise my hand? You got to take a sip. If I have. If you have. You never had a threesome? Not yet. Oh, look. I've been We're on close. Okay. I've been close. Well, you still got to take a sip. I just okay. had to get it out of you. Yeah, I've been close. Yeah, no, I haven't had one. Okay. And why is that? Because I feel like most men by your age have experienced that. Is it something that's like not on the to-do list, not on it the is, bucket list? It's not on the to-do list, but it is on the bucket list. Oh. There's a difference. The okay. to-do list is my daily, my, you know, things that I want to accomplish, get done, da-da-da. Bucket list is like the life 
the life thing and I've been close and I feel it coming in the next three months. I'm wait, I'm what? big on energy. Like I'm, <laughs> like I've been, I've been, wait, I, 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 I just spoke about this. In the I, next three months? I just spoke about this on our podcast earlier today and I was like, I feel it coming and like I feel it in the air, I feel the energy and I'm good at manifesting things. And if I say it's gonna come, like I I feel it, I feel it coming. So it'll happen. Okay. But I've gotten close though. Okay, so wait, you are manifesting this threesome? Yes. Okay, well, look, the power of manifestation is, real. <laughs> is huge. Yeah. Um, I want to know more about Dormtainment and your life's passion before I start getting into okay. the nitty gritty. How old were you when you discovered your life's purpose was to be this, you know, comedian, um, this artist, this musician? I've always been in music since I was like sixth grade, so maybe like eleven or twelve, and then um, when I was like 18, I was like, I'm moving to Atlanta to pursue music, mm -hmm. um, to pursue entertainment. I always knew I wanted to do something in entertainment. I wanted to entertain. I entertained my family, entertained my friends. I knew I wanted to be an entertainer. So I moved to Atlanta. First day of school, uh, first day of college, I met the guys. And that's when I really started to develop, like, oh, we have something special here. Yeah. Like, we can make people laugh and stuff like that. And I was... 20, 18. I was 18 at the time when I first met him. And then we started the business when we were 20, 21 years old. And we've been 10 years strong now. So, Okay, yeah. so it's a 10-year friendship. Yep, 10 there's, years. It's a, and if people don't know the backstory, there's like five, yeah, five of, us, of you yeah. guys yeah, yeah. living in a house. Living in a house. And Grinding that's got to be a crazy situation when it comes to your guys' dating life. Uh, How do you guys bring women over? And <laughs> well, it's not, Now, when we were first got to L.A. and we were in an apartment... <laughs> That's when it was a little. That's when it was a little difficult. But I'm very honest and very straightforward with whoever I'm dealing with. Like this is my situation. This is where I am. Because what's the point of lying about it? Like right. this is my life. And you know, if you don't feel comfortable, cool. We we'll, we can go out somewhere. We can. Do, but if you want to come chill, we can come chill. And the guys are all cool. So like when we first moved to L.A., we had a three bedroom, and so that means we had the room with one one of the right. other guys. And so if we had somebody we really admired and wanted to come over, like hey. You want to step out for like? Were you, you putting know, like a little sock on the door? You no, know, I just step like just step out for a little bit. I will text you when you when you when you good. Like we we good, but uh, everybody was really cool. And even now we're in a house, so it's different. Like mm -hmm. everybody has their own space and stuff like that. So it didn't make it difficult. Some women may uh, may not rock with it at all, and but uh, and then other women are like, okay, cool. This is I know you're working towards something. You're doing something, so I'm not I'm not mad at it. So yeah, it's been it's been it hasn't been bad. A lot of people will say you're an aspiring artist or yeah. an aspiring creative yeah. just because you're not as big as what people, you know, deem successful. Like, yeah. they're not saying you consistently, like, maybe on, you know, having your own TV show, your own Netflix special, yeah, yeah. whatever people deem successful. Mm -hmm. A lot of women will say, well, he's not successful yet. I can't date him. Or do you ever run into the women who won't get with the aspiring artists or who aren't down for the struggle? Because the struggle no, is real. No, no, I don't. I've never run into that because I don't know. I've, I, it's, there's a difference between being creative and being a creator. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's creative. But not a lot of people will put the action towards being a creator, mm. actually putting something out. Right. So in that right, I'm successful because we have put things out for the past 10 years. We've done Comedy Central. We've done live shows. We've written stuff with Kevin Hart. We've, you know what I'm saying? We've done certain things that I'm like, all right, this is successful. Do I have all of the monetary gains? Mm -hmm. No, not of course, but not not yet, of course. In my eyes, you're successful. But that's what I'm saying. Because like, <laughs> I deem success is saying you're going to do something and then do following something, through. And that's what I'm saying. So in that <laughs> right, I'm very successful. But um, but for and, women who think to, it's financial. If it's financial, then I'm just not the one for them. And I'm, I have no problem with that. But they, I'm, I'm at a point in my life when I realize a lot of stuff that's reflected upon someone else is coming from internal. Yes, so I agree with that. Whatever they are having, or if they come from a family who didn't have money then they got to a point where all they want is somebody with money i can't blame them because that's just what they know that was their life that, experience. that's their life experience and they haven't adjusted to whatever you know they need to so i don't i don't really run into that because once again i don't even attract that i ask me. everybody who comes into the g-spot what's more important to them passion or security uh passion passion so when it comes to a woman you have to have passion with her passion i oftentimes say too and this is actually well known yeah, yeah. that women Men don't care how much a woman makes. They care how they spend their money. 
So instead of men striving to be in a relationship with someone who's like, she has to yeah. make X amount. Yeah, yeah. Whereas like women, they are looking for a mm -hmm. specific number sign. And um, my husband was going on like a G and he found some clip last night and I overheard it. And it was Dave Chappelle actually saying what a woman's um, test in life is material and what a man's test in life is women. So women are tested based on like when you dangle yeah. material items from in front yeah. of them. Men are tested based on women. Women, yeah. Are you weak to women? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I would never even try to even hide that. It's it was like for a long time I was like, yo, like I don't know if I'm ever going to get like in a serious relationship because I was like I just love women. Not even, and not even remove sex out of it just the energy of a, a woman like being around women like i feel like women elevate you that's why i want daughters because mm. i feel like oh you don't want sons most men are like oh yeah, I no no I want, I want daughters because i feel like it's a certain love i mean you can have it with both children but a certain love a uh a, a daughter daddy have it's mm -hmm. a certain uh energy that a woman gives a man to get up and like get active and like instill like a certain energy in into a into a man and i i really love that and I grew and I think it all stems back to my childhood because I was raised by my mother okay so you didn't have a father I know my father was there but we didn't really connect connect until later in my team maybe like 18 we finally really I mean he was there but more so show show up for a little bit come out show oh, up for, got you. my mom she was there the whole time and, and my aunts and my grandmothers and stuff like that so these women raised me and I seen how they just went throughout their daily lives and how strong my mom was to have me and my little sister and come from work and do this and do that. Da, da, da. And I was like, it just gave me a certain energy. And I'm like, and she always just instilled in me to be the best, to do the best. And I, I, I mean, I just, I just, in that sense, I love women. Of course, sex is always a part because <laughs> women's bodies. But do you feel are like you art, understand women more having been raised by women and having sisters in the household? Yeah, uh, I do believe so. And understanding myself, Help me understand women more. I read a book called um, "The The Ways of the Superior Man." Uh -huh. Changed my life. I read that. Wait, uh, I need to read this. Let me yeah, write this down. The Ways a, of a Superior the Man. The Ways of a Superior Man, and that book was given to me right before I turned thirty by a woman who was uh, married, and she was like, "Read this book." I read that book. Just it just it really helped me realize certain nuances when it came to like just relationships and, and men and women and stuff like that and that really opened up my eyes and then also me understanding myself as a man helped me to understand women because I knew that I'm coming from a certain perspective and viewpoint and they are too so it's no need to get mad or get frustrated but it's more like we need to just come to an, an yeah. understanding you know what I'm a lot of times we're very com combative when it comes to like you know men and women oh you guys do this and you guys do that. Right. And, that's, and that's fine but like you do also have to understand it's two different species, like it's two totally different tones, emotions, and all this stuff. So, um, yeah, I you mean, see, I got on the counter. If women are from Mars, men are from Venus, or no, I mean, I'm sorry, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 a real thing, you know what I'm saying? But that provides for me my comedy as well because that's just what that's just a part of a part of life. Wait, but. we're shutting out this book though. I need you guys to read this with me, okay? The ways of the a superior, superior man. man. That's going to be our spicy book that recommendation and the four of the agreements day. Changed my life. And the four what? Agreements. The four agreements. What's four that agreement. one about? Uh, basically, about the four agreements to life to help you live a more peaceful life. The first agreement is be impeccable with your word. So if you say you're going to do something, do it. If you say you're going to uh, be somewhere, do that. If you say you're going to take this girl out on a date, do that. Have I been the best of that? No. And I knew that. And that's why I tried to read that book in order to help me. And then the second agreement was um, uh, don't take anything personal. So like a lot of, a lot of things that we have, like when it uh, traffic, for example, you're in traffic, you immediately get mad. You're cussing out people. You're honking the horn. That's not doing anything for you. Right. You're taking that personal. Now that's going to affect the rest of your day because now you're going to go home, tell somebody else about it, yep. then you replan it. You know what I'm saying? You're like, why am I mad today? And it's like, I didn't need to be get mad. Get other people upset because yeah. you had a bad day. <laughs> and then the third, the third one was uh, uh, never assume. And that one, that one, when it comes to women, was a big one. A lot of women Ooh. I talked to because he don't pick up that phone. He don't answer that text. Immediately, a whole story. Their imagination starts yeah, running wild. You start running. Now you're assuming something. You're making up this whole thing, and then it doesn't even exist. Even when just 
anything in life is going wrong, you're like, oh, God, the worst thing is going on. It's like, yo, calm down. Right. And then Cheer, the fourth cheers. agreement was always do your best or whatever it is. So even when it comes to even if you're in a marriage, like how you clean the house, how you take care of your woman, have that same energy outside when you take care of your business when you're doing stuff like that. So that book really changed my life, too. So, so you know I'm going to yeah. catch you and make you go back to that third point. Let's do it. Why? Because it was assumption, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Women do have a tendency to allow their imagination to start running wild when we don't hear from you, when we don't get that text. Yeah. If you're in your rational mind, you're going to tell yourself like, well, maybe he's just busy. You know, let me just yeah. trust that, you know, he had a long day. Yeah. Why do you guys do that? Though? I want you to speak on behalf of the entire male species. Yep. <laughs> so much when a woman, no, I'm, you I'm know that a woman wants to hear from you. You yeah. know that she wants the communication. Yeah. She wants the connection. She wants to be thought of. Are you not thinking of them or are you just busy? Uh, it's, it's two parts. One is boundaries. One, it's like you set those when you come into it. Like, hey, look, these are the times I'm usually available. Like I'm reading a book right now called Digital Minimalism. And in that book, it says you sometimes have to set parameters, even when it comes to family and friends. So if you meet this girl and you're like, oh, I do like her, but I know I'm busy between, you know, 11 Mm a.m. and 4 p.m. That time you may not get me, but hey. Let's talk after so and so. You know what I'm saying? And and you just had to set boundaries and parameters. And to be honest, and this is just speaking on like a lot of guys won't admit it, but sometimes no, I'm not thinking about you. Woo. To be honest. That part. No, like, to be the honest, truth, like the truth, the naked uh, truth I'm, hurts. I'm not. Sometimes <laughs> I'm not thinking about you. And it's like you like I don't want to fake it and be like, oh hey. And do the uh, I'm thinking check-in. about you. Um, che- like, nah, I'll talk to you when I get home <laughs> later. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that because we're human. We have a thousand things going on at one time. And it's a little, it's almost an ego thing. Like, you, why you're not thinking about me? Like, why, like, are you, you love me. You said, why, why am I not on your mind the whole mm-hmm. day? Because I also have a life, a personal life. But should life. she interpret that as, he doesn't like me or he's not that no, into me. Like, no, like, for example, um, I love my mother. Okay. Would do anything unconditional. Oh, this is a great example, I actually. Love, <laughs> I love my mother. Do I want to talk to her all day? No, dang. No. You really have to be in the mood to talk like, to mom. Like, I'm so but sorry, I mom. I know you're listening. And she, and she, would, <laughs> she would never question that I'd love her. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, And that's the type of relationship you should have like yo you you don't have to question it now if it goes on for weeks on end that's a different that's a different thing you should have some thought of your partner but like this whole thing of like you stop texting me good morning or you da 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 it's the fairy tale is going to wear off at some point and that's a part of you can't even keep that masquerade going like that's the facade yeah that's just a part of the ebbs and flows of a relation and how humans do i don't expect you to wake up as soon as you wake up Hey, good morning, beautiful. I hope the sun is shining. And like, come on, it's corny. Like after a while, it's not you. Not that's not your true. But a lot of women expect that in the courtship process. And so, oftentimes in my (laughs) profession, I'm I'm talking them off of a ledge when I'm coaching them because they have this impulsive need to get upset when they don't hear from him consistently, either every single day or you know at least two to three times a day. They want the check ins. But yeah. they don't expect that from their friends. They don't start to worry are exactly. their friends not friending them anymore yeah. when they don't hear from them. Yeah. Or did they lose their job? They didn't hear from their boss today. Yeah. Like they're not getting paranoid. But when it comes to the dating scene, all of a sudden he doesn't like me anymore. Or, you know, he's mm-hmm. not that into me because I mm-hmm. didn't hear from him. Why do we expect to hear from men more in our dating life and relationships than in our other relationships? I don't expect my mom to call me every single day. Yeah, because it's... Uh like I said, it's a it's a little bit of ego, I think. A little bit of ego because it's like two people come in this thing and it's like you already had to like go out the way, you know, ask her out and do all stuff. And it's like, all right, well, if he want me, he got to come get me. But why, why is it like that? Why is it that he has to like be at your every call? He has to like show up to every text. He like some people just aren't good texters. Some people, some people the aren't. The communication yeah. is off, yeah. Some people are, you have to, and you have to. Two people, like, even sex for the first time, it can be awkward for people because you don't know each other. You're right. So why come into this thing and expecting to know his 
love language or your love language. Mm-hmm. Like he may be a uh, like a, a words of affirmation person. Right. You may be a physical person, and that already maybe that doesn't work well to get. Like you have to learn each other. So I think you got to remove some of the expectations and just like kind of let's let's hang out. Let's just figure. Let's just talk. Let's let's roll with it. People aren't. It's like a saying that goes like even in my field, uh, like jump off the ledge and build the parachute on the way down. Sometimes you just got to do that. Mm. So when you meet somebody, sometimes you just got to, you know what? I don't know everything. I, I'm I can't, still in this process of learning. Yeah, I'm still in process of learning. We can learn together. I'm right. going to figure this out. But when we set these expectations and then they break one thing, it's like, ah, oh, I'm off of them because they – they don't they don't know how to communicate but maybe you communicate different i asked the ladies um that i had interviewed last week mm-hmm. what how many times they thought that a man should get a chance to have sex if it's bad with you right you guys hook up it's yeah. poor sex yeah. right he didn't he didn't you didn't bust and it was just like eh, yeah nothing to you know group checks your friends about yeah how many chances as a man do you think a woman should give you if she wasn't satisfied the first time? Do you think that that should be something that you you get permitted to try again? You know, you didn't succeed the first time. How many times do you want a woman to give you a chance of doing? That's on her, honestly. Like, if, if I don't do good the first time and she really feels that strong about it and she feels that like we don't have no connection, mm-hmm. it's either if I try again and she's like, oh, no, I'm, I'm kind of off. I'm not really feeling it. Respect. Like, it's nothing I can do about that. Because my thing is, if it's meant, the opportunity will present itself again. Like for me, when I was like t- like twenty three, I had my first uh, couldn't get it up incident. Just was not, just wasn't Wait, working. Wait, you gotta share this. So basically, it was this girl, and I had been chatting with her for a minute, trying to get at her, trying to get at her. She wasn't giving me no time of day. All right, cool. So I was off it. So like two months later, I'm in my bed chilling. I see a phone call from her. It's like twelve at night, and I just got off work. So I'm in the bed. I'm tired. She hits me. She's like, hey, I can hear a bunch of cackling in the background. I'm like, oh, she coming from the club. It's, like, <laughs> it's a lot of, yeah, bitch, let it out in the back. Like, all right, this is it. Good, girl. <laughs> it's yes. a lot going on the in the back. So then uh, she's like, hey, what are you doing? I was like, I'm in the bed. She was like, I want to come over. I said, Ooh. oh, shit, say no more. I sent her the address. Hang up. So I'm immediately excited. And too excited isn't As good. As you should be. Too excited isn't good. It's so not why is that? Pressure. Okay. In my head, I'm like, all right, cool. We about to get it. This is my time. She done, she been put me off for way too long. <laughs> all right, I'm finna bend her spine in half. It's been to go down. And she got there, and it was like a movie scene. She got there. She had her little club dress on. Ooh, I was like, oh, this bum, here bum, we bum, go. Bum, we bum, out bum. here. We kissing, da-da-da, get in the bed, kissing, kissing, touching. I'm hard. I'm ready to go. I grab a condom. I go to put it on. Ew. And I was like, ooh. Ooh, okay, wait a minute. That ain't that ain't right. So let's uh, back it up again. So try to kiss a kiss again, kiss foreplay, da da da. Get it hard again. I go to put the condom on. Just couldn't. It was. It, it's not nothing worse than trying to put a water noodle into a, <laughs> into a hole. It's just, but she's it, gonna take that personal. She's oh, gonna think she wasn't sexy enough. Immediately after I said, look. I'm tired. Mm-hmm. I'm tired. I, I don't know what's going on. She said, okay, da da da. Is it me? I knew that's just what she was going to say. And I was like, I promise you, it's not you, da da da. I let it go. After that, she rarely talked to me, Ooh. rarely talked to me. I seen her like six months later out and about. And we got the chit chat and stuff like that. But the time was right. The energy, the right moment was right. It was unexpected. And then. I had a chance to redeem myself. She let so you it wasn't a, like she I let you hit again. Yeah, yeah, she did. And it was fun. <laughs> the thing is, it was no pressure though. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Her calling me, I'm getting up, I'm tired, She's I'm like, excited. Perform. I'm like, oh, um, I think it was a lot of pressure. And we can get in our head sometimes because you know, sex is a lot. It's mental. It's very mental. Yeah. A lot of people, it, yeah, it is physical, but it also is a lot of mental that goes into it. So I think when it comes to giving second chances, I think you kind of just got to go with the energy of the situation. If she likes you beyond the sex, yeah, right. she might just hang out with you and be like, you know what? That was a moment. Maybe we were both drunk. Maybe because, you know, drunk set or a high set, whatever. And it's not if you're not in your right mind, sober mind, sometimes it can just be like, OK, maybe we just trip and right. this happened. So then you go from there. But if it keeps being bad and that's a big part of your life, then you got to make a decision from there. Whether you're going to continue. You're so. attributing your particular situation to the pressure of having to perform. Yeah. A lot of times to like outside influences such mm-hmm. as alcohol yeah. or, yeah. you know, substances can come into the situation and affect your performance as well. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can be distracted, if a man is stressed out, 
if a man just um, had a crazy long day and we're going to yeah, need yeah. tired, like oftentimes we just expect like you should just be able to get it up for me because I'm sexy Listen, and I got to go. Of, it's a lot of blood that got to rush. It's a lot of man. blood. A lot of, <laughs> lot of blood that got to rush in different areas. And it's like I've had times where we're in a time where it's kind of interesting like uh, I, I find myself as an attractive young man. You're so very like, handsome. Thank love. you. And I feel like if I don't want to have sex, women take it personally. Wait, are you out here in these streets denying women the dick? I definitely, definitely have. Okay. And sometimes it feels good, to be honest with you. That, look, I tell men do this all the time. That's, that's you want to affect a ego, a ego yeah. turn her down, she will be on you. I've been like, in situations right. where I literally went to chat and have a nice time. Sex was not on my mind. And then the girl goes to try it, and I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm honestly just not, I'm not in that mindset right now. Mm-hmm. But I, I fuck with you, but I'm just not in that mindset right now. And they, first they like, okay. But then the next day they're like, you know what? I just don't like how you just kind of deny me like that. You made me feel like there's something wrong with me. Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. Is something wrong with me? I'm like, nah, I just don't want to have sex right now. But that in this society. Right. Is, they feel like it's abnormal. It's like, you're a, you're a man and. I'm giving you all of me and you don't want to take it. It's like, <laughs> no, John Legend, I don't want to take all of you. <laughs> Why are we these kids giving all of me away? No. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's it does like, not need to be but it's just it's interesting how that works because if I was to press a Them, woman like oh, that. Done and done. If I would be like, that you know, I think it's kind of rude how you deny <laughs> me that vagina. Like that. She'd be like, this nigga tripping. Right. Like But it's just a that's a double standard when it comes like it's just it's just not like that. But sometimes I just don't feel like or sometimes I just might honestly just not want to take it there yet because I've been down the path of taking it there too early and then something goes wrong maybe yeah. I maybe I see something different with you so it's a perspective thing don't look at it as oh he don't want me look at it as well, maybe he sees something else right. that that might help us out you know what I'm saying so you just it's yeah. okay for men to not be in the mood yeah, women feel like, that all the time nigga be but sleepy, we don't like, get <laughs> Like, you did put in your bio you like to take naps. Listen, I've, I've told people literally, I'm tired. I don't feel like doing it. And if you can't respect that, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm tired. Like I'm gonna get my rest because I like my rest. I'm not with the whole get no sleep, sleep when you die. No, if you don't sleep, you're gonna sleep real early when you die because you need to get rest. <laughs> like that's that, that's foolish. Okay. So we're back with Rome, and uh, he is the infamous YouTube star, um, um, worked on so many different projects with so many celebrities. The list just is too long. <laughs> but you're extra. I would call you a YouTube sensation. That is like how I would refer to yeah. you. Okay. Um, you are probably one of the funniest men that I know and just so Thank kind-hearted. You. We don't meet a lot of just like good, authentic, genuine people. Thank what you. I see in you, I'm sure a lot of single ladies admire and would love an opportunity or have had an opportunity to date you, mm-hmm. yet you won't commit. You don't want to be in a relationship. And mm-hmm. so for my listeners and for the women who are, I want them to understand why when we get into these dating situations with guys, we think maybe we can change their mind. We think we're yeah. wonderful. Why won't you commit? Um, It's not that I won't commit. It's that I don't want to. Okay. Why don't you want to? I commit? don't want to right now because it's interesting. I'm, I don't know if it's I'm I'm actually trying to double down on that and figure out what it is right now. I don't want to say it's career because that 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 has been used and it's not that is a part of it, but it's probably something deeper. It's probably something that I'm still trying to figure out. And I'm honest with with saying that. That's what I tell people straight up like I don't want a relationship right now. And I'm okay with saying that. People can judge I think what it is is we were built off of even myself. I'm in the process of unlearning a lot of things that I was taught growing up. And I was taught, I come from, uh, I mean, I'm a military brat. I was born in Germany, bounced around a lot of places, but I was raised in North Carolina. So country town, you know, straight working uh, community, nine to five situation. You go to, you go to school, you go to college, you find a wife, you settle down, blah, blah, blah. I'm in a whole nother realm. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm in a brand new state and we were always taught and we were always shunned upon if you weren't married by a certain age or if you didn't. A lot have, of people experience yeah, that. If you're not if you don't and that builds this this like almost like anxiety around your life where it's like, oh God, like I'm turning 30 and I don't have anybody. And I just think all that's bullshit. All of that, all of that is bullshit. And 
there's nothing wrong with unlearning and relearning what you want. Like if you don't, if, if you've been taught Spicy that you, right there. if you want to be married, be married. If you don't want to be married, don't let people make it seem like you're a terrible person for not wanting to be married. Not going to be married. Yeah. And I think watching my mom go through her relationship, she's single now. She went through two divorces. I think that could be a part in me that it might. First off, I was going to wait for you to yeah. <laughs> say all this. Like, because we, I, I'm listening to you. Yeah. And as an expert in my, in my profession, the moment that you told me that your parents weren't in yeah, yeah. a healthy relationship or mm -hmm. that it was somewhat tumultuous and how your father was in your life or your relationship mm -hmm. with him, I instantly could hear within that that you did not witness your parents being like madly in love for sure, for sure. and yeah, yeah. raising you guys and teaching you even how to form a healthy relationship, and which is oftentimes the breakdown. And that's why I'm at a point where I'm figuring a lot out. I'm like, okay, oh, maybe I don't like that. Maybe I, maybe I do like that. And I'm, I'm 31 now and I'm young and I feel like I'm okay with figuring that out. Now I will say this, there is a part of me that, knows that I can commit, but I think it's just a matter of, is this the right time? Like I'm in a very, I'm in a healthy mindset right now and I'm in a healthy growing state. And I don't know if I wanted to bring anybody into me while I'm in the process of growing. It's like, Hey, you see me growing, da da da. But right. it's like, I don't know if I really want to bring you in, and that, and that's okay. And and I feel like that's fine for me, but even also, and my mother was cheated on as well. Mm. So, I You've feel like a seen lot of that the commitment I've, issues. I've, like I've seen it, front. and maybe I'm just now realizing, like, oh, maybe that's the stuff that's kind of been like, you know what? I'm cool. I, when it happens, it happens. Like, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not even worried about it. But also, I do think because, and this is just being uh, just very upfront and, and honest. Like, when it comes to dating and things like that, especially in LA. I mean, I can't just, I mean, 2019, honestly, New York, LA, wherever, <laughs> that's a big city, especially for men in my career field, we feel like we feel a pressure to, uh, be that guy when it comes to like, I want to make sure I can pay for you for right. things. I want to make sure I can have you have a good time? I yeah. want to make sure I don't want to just invite you over to Naturally, like, as a man, you want to feel like you can provide. You know what I'm saying? And if if I don't feel that right now, it's tough. It's tough to just be like, hey, come into my life and join me. Right. Especially when I got this mess going on. And I kind of don't want to do that. So that's why I feel like a relationship has been furthest of my thoughts and just me really getting to a place of where I am completely at peace. And happy is one of my number one things, and I'm and I'm getting there. Who knows? By the end of this year, my whole because people. That's another thing we have to stop doing. Stop telling people that oh, what you're doing is wrong when they could literally change the next day or or a week later yeah. they could meet somebody that flips their whole. You know what I'm saying? Like, but, and that's just where I'm at at the moment. That women have that they can. They women think that they're going to be that one to flip yeah, your, yeah. to change your perspective. No, no, they should. They, they should. If they come into it and the man, to, if he says, I don't want to be in a relationship, believe him. Believe him and let him do his thing. Now, if you believe him and you stick there and you still get hurt in the process, I'm sorry, sweetheart, that is your fault. What, <laughs> when is it okay like, in your, as a man, yeah. okay, we just met online, we just started dating. Yeah. When is it okay for me to ask you if you want a relationship or what you're looking for? In your relationship status. is If that's what the woman is looking for, if she knows going into it, like, I'm out here husband searching, yeah, ask straight off back. Because what are we playing for? Like, because if you ask, it's like, all right, uh, no. And then she's like, okay, well, I know he doesn't want a relationship. That's not what he's looking for. Now, granted, there are situations where you... That might be what she's looking for, but she wants to play it a little. Like she doesn't want to seem too crazy, desperate. Too like desperate. Yeah. So you may wait a date or two, and, and, I'm, and that's fine. But if you are getting to part of getting to know is getting to ask questions, and if that's one of your questions, like even if it's not right out, do you want to be married, or if it's like, uh, what are your long term like dating goal? Like, are you do are you out here just doing your thing? Are you, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause. I think it's fair to ask that because why not? Like communicate. Like that's how we're gonna get anywhere. I'm gonna ask you something that is a is extremely personal. Okay. 
you were raised by your mother, yes. you feel like majority of the time, mm -hmm. even though she was at one point married to your father. Mm -hmm. Which parent did you see that was cheating, your father or your stepfather? Uh, stepfather. Now, how many years did you spend with your biological father in the picture? Uh, he was in the military because my mom got out when she had me, and then it was in, it was in and out for a, a while. Like we had to have a long talk when I got older, which is good because we're we're fine. We're like best friends now, but I can't really. I'm not exactly sure, but my stepdad he was in the house for like a little while. He was in the house. For okay, a little so while. here's the question: Yeah, when it comes to your dating life, yeah. and your romantic love life, yeah. Who do you think that you are more like, your mother or your father? Whose behavior are you mirroring? Interesting. I've never thought about that. But if I would say it would probably be my mother because she's even now that she's out of a marriage relationship, she's like, I'm good by myself. She was like, I'm fine. She was like, this is where I'm at. She was like, but she has been she's been through it. And so that could be coming from a place of still a little hurt mm -hmm. uh, um, because I'll, I'm sure she hasn't really talked to anybody like about it. But when it comes to my heart, it's like my dad, my dad's married, remarried. He's been remarried for 12, 13 years now. And he has my two little brothers with my stepmother. So when it comes to my heart, my mom always said, she was like, you got your heart like your dad. Like, I know you do. Like you're, you're a softy. Like I know you. <laughs> like, so when it comes to like, she's not necessarily worried about me getting married or something like that. She said, she's no, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. My mom's a little bit more cold heart. Like she's a little, little, little bit more of a, of a rebel than, than that. My, so I would say probably I thought my mom, but now when I'm thinking about it, it's probably my dad. Okay. Uh, honestly, it's probably, my, <laughs> it's probably my dad. Like I get, I get a lot of that side from my dad. How many coming to relationships have you been in? Uh, like three, three. Okay, so three, you right? will commit. You just don't no, for sure, yeah. Want to commit right now? Yeah, and I and I think it's like I said, it's a lot to do with just where I'm at. I'm at a pivotal point, which is very interesting as well. I'm at a pivotal point where I know I'm about to be a big deal. Yeah, like I know. I know you I are too. I'm like I know him now. Like, I know I it know in my now. heart and my soul. <laughs> so it's a pivotal point where it's like, do I, do I go ahead and jump into something now just for the sake of me being afraid of what's to come yeah. when I make it? Or do I just ride my wave, do my healing process, learn myself, unlearn things, relearn things, and then when it happens, happens. And I think I'm going with the second option because I would hate to just jump into something just because I feel this big wave of I don't know coming. Right. And then, because I know it's going to be a lot. My dad has asked before, he was like, are you prepared for like, the amount of like success women. and fame yeah, it's and a all lot the of stuff, women a lot that are going to be throwing that comes with that. And I was like, I believe I am, but of course nobody knows until they get into it. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, but yeah, I do think, I know for sure I will get, be committed at some point, but just right now I'm just not, I'm, I don't want it. But for honest. a lot of women that are listening, they're like, okay, yeah. so what do we do with that? Because you move on. And thank you for saying that yeah. because a lot of times they're like trying to justify or rationalize yeah. why they would stay. But for men, it is about timing. Timing is everything for you guys. Yeah. If it is not the right time and you don't want to be in a relationship, you, won't. you will not be in a relationship. It is yeah. not oftentimes at the forefront of your guys' priority list. And what's interesting in that um, in that book, The Way the Superior Man, and I, I resonated with it so much because it said people understand like even if the man, let's say a man is happily married with his wife, has children, all this and that, if he is not on his mission and his purpose, he will not be happy in 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 what his relate like. So if this man is telling you, look, I don't want to be committed right now. I'm on a mission right. I have something in my heart and my mind I need to go after. Let him go. Let just let, let him go do his thing. He could come back. Mm -hmm. He may not come back. But that's just that's but just women want to be there just in case. No, like, and, and and I and I understand. I understand. Women say that I see quotes, Instagram quotes. <laughs> Don't let him be there. Why can't you guys just let us be there? Da, da, da. Don't let him use the excuse of he's the. It's not an excuse. It's how he feels as a human being in his heart. If you were on a mission, like if there's some women who go on this whole, I'm not, I'm not dating. I'm not kissing. I'm going on a sabbatical. Right. I don't want to touch the detox and, and then, but the, it's okay for you. You know what I'm saying? And when, when, when a guy comes to you and says to you, you're like, no, I'm good. I'm not in dating mode right now. We have to step back and be like, okay. So I think that same thing can go for a guy. Like if he, I understand you want to be a support system and all that, but like you're supporting him more by letting him do what he needs to do. Right. To be, to be honest, 
And he, I think if it's meant for her to come back, he'll remember that. He'll be like, you know what? She let me grow. She let me do my thing. She seen that it was better for me to go do that right. than to hurt, be here and just get hurt by me being a dickhead or being like just not attentive to her. People just got to cut, cut these, all these stipulations out. Let's just draw the line and, and tell it like it is. Like call a spade a spade. Like he doesn't want to be with you. He don't want to be with you. Like that's. I think that's a hard pill for people to oh, swallow. It's, it's very hard. It's, like, it's very tough. Oh, it's but not I'm so easy. amazing. And you'll be hurt. You'll be hurt <laughs> for a day or two, maybe a week. But you'll, you'll be over. You'll it be fine. It sounds like you do a lot of reading room. What else are you doing for self growth? Uh, high frequency things. Anything that uh, involves me that. Whether it's high frequency foods, that's why I try to do the vegan stuff. Like I, I'm, I'm doing that, or that's whether working out. Like working out is a big therapy session for me because even the group of men that I work out with. I do see with, the guns getting bigger. You know I'm like, I'm I don't to, remember meeting them. Listen, I'm trying to catch up to your husband. All right, because that's a big man. All right, so, so you know, I'm just working out. That's like a therapy thing. Um, meditate. As soon as I get wake up in the morning, I listen to high frequency music to try just to set set my energy, set my mood right because. People, we don't know what's going to happen to us as we step out into the world. Great so point. we have to make sure we get in our own space, get our own vibes and energy right, and then step out. So I do that. Um, like I said, meditate, uh, just uh, write, do stand up comedy. It's just like just just go out sometimes, just go out and just like jump on the stage and just do stuff. Anything that's going to propel me to uh, my higher self is what I'm. That's what I'm. Are on you a right spiritual now. man? Yeah, I'm very spiritual. Do you believe in God? Yes. Okay. And and the thing I was just is, curious because like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, a lot no. of people don't believe in God. So I was just no, curious. No, for sure. If, that's like no, no, that's 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 my heart. That's my that's that's what God is love. Love is a part of all of us. I think that's that, that's where I am. And you see him over here trying to sell you too. Yeah, no, ladies, I do think yeah, no, no, that no, no, for sure. Like <laughs> within would, this year we can lock him down. You know, you listen, you never know. That's because like I said, <laughs> people grow and change on the daily. Like I could call you next week and be like, you know what? I was talking a lot of stuff last week. <laughs> I found something crazy. You know, so you, you self-discovery is an everyday thing. It's a part of life. It's a part of the journey. And so don't be mad if somebody is in a time in their life where they're either going through something or trying to figure something out. Because, like I said, in six months and in a couple of days, next, whatever the time frame is, their whole life could shift when they discover something else about themselves. And like, oh, because we're all searching for answers. I mm-hmm. feel like we're all searching for answers. And we continuously are questioning ourselves every day. And so with those questions, we're going on a journey to find those answers. But like you know as saying? a woman, we usually have this wish list that we have, right? Yeah. Or this what we'll call manifestation yeah. list, whether it's your pastor telling you or it's your or your relationship coach telling yeah. you. There is this list that exists of what we're looking for in a partner, what we would like to have. Yeah. I usually make my clients do a wants versus needs. So yeah. we can be very realistic. If the person has the foundation. Absolutely. What do you think is yours or the male species? What's like the most important elements that you guys are looking for in order for, we know timing is important, but when it comes to what a woman has to have, what do you think those elements need to be on your wish list? Well, number one, openness. I feel like when you come into something clo- like kind of closed off and well, he better not have the, or he better do this. Mm-hmm. You immediately cut yourself off to discovering something new. Like, and I think openness is a big thing. It was like, all right, I've never done. Uh, he he says he loves rock climbing, right. and I I don't understand, but let me maybe see what this is about. You Ooh. know what I'm saying? So openness is a big thing. That's like, the why and spicy. That's willing to say yes. Yes, like this <laughs> willing to say it. Like openness is a big thing for, for when it goes for me. Of course, I can't speak for all men, but. Um, I remember even this this pastor one time talking about like the three things that men need and that's like reassurance, like, hey, you're doing good, like you're doing good. They want the affirmation. Mm -hmm. Boom. Um, I think another one was, I can't remember the second, but he even, as the third one said, sex. Like this is a thing that is is a need and it's also a thing in the Bible. It's a thing that's been, from the birth of the universe that's been around and it's a need for men because it's just like, we kind of thrive off that. Like, that's our drive. Like, as the the species of men, we our hunger. Like, we hunger for it. And when we don't get it, we start to act a little... <laughs> so you're saying a prerequisite on your list is sex? No, no. I'm not saying that they have to give me sex. I'm just saying that eventually that's 
that's like going. It's going to be important. You want to make sure be, you have yeah. sexual chemistry. A chemistry, yeah. Okay. We, it's going to be important. Like somebody <laughs> like, ladies, asked me, don't be going no, out no, here just giving. Somebody it up, asked me a funny question the other day. For that. Somebody asked me a funny question, and they were like, "So, say you met a girl, she had everything you wanted. You're, you're boom, you're in it, everything, but she doesn't give head. What'd you do?" I said, "Well, we're not dating." Wait, that would be the cutoff. Yeah, we're not dating. She's not even open to giving you. Yeah, yeah, she, like yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, she's like, like no. Nope. Her oral is not her but thing. Who these days are not I giving mean, out? You never I know. <laughs> you never know. But well, I said, I said, because I said, you know why? It's deeper than just the feeling of head. Is it's like this person isn't open to There's even boundaries. trying to please yeah. me, or it, it, like this. And so it's like, why would I be with somebody? I'm gonna cheat. Like, and black men don't cheat, but I'm gonna cheat in that Wait. situation. Because first what happened? off, Did I say you something? just said black men don't cheat, and I just saw you post something yeah. on social because it's scientifically proven. Like I can't, I, I, I would have brought my go. paper. I would have brought my paper <laughs> in here, but it's scientifically proven that black men. I don't want to see this in pure. There are black men in here right the now. They understand what I'm saying. <laughs> black men don't cheat, so that's what I'm saying. But in that situation, I'm probably gonna cheat because if you're not giving me no type of head, and I love head, if I go out and I'm out, and you know somebody get to whispering in my ear or some crap. I, I'm, I'm out, like I'm going to cheat. So it's just like certain things, like openness is like a big portion, like open so, uh, to new a things. Woman who's open. Oh yeah, but open and how important is physical attraction to you? Very, very. Because if I'm not attracted to you, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> people got to stop fronting like they're not. They're not people that's not attractive out here. It's just not. They're not attracted to you. That's fine. <laughs> like we were saying, oh, well, there's just everybody for somebody. It's all about the yeah, minds nah, and nah. their personality. I hate when people be like, well, it, I just, I mean, I love them for the person. And granted, there are beautiful women who I went out with that their personality was trash. So, what's a trash personality? What does that look like? Because some women a lot don't of ta- know. A lot they of, ta- a lot of typing, a lot of typing on your phone. A lot of uh, I can't discuss things. Like I'm a space nerd. Well, when I say a lot of typing on your phone, I mean. Like, that's all they doing. Like, it's okay. on their phone. Social is their whole life. Like, uh, Lil Wayne said a line. He was like, uh, all she knows is social media. We don't even socialize. And that's a real, that's a deep, that's yeah. a deep thought. Like, yeah, it's like, too. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, don't social, like, socialize with me here. Like, not online. Some people, I had girls tell me, oh, uh, don't call me. I don't really do the phone calls. Just text me. I, don't, I can't be with you. There's nothing we can, like, that's not communication. Just text me. Just text me. Okay. That's not communication. There's sometimes, <laughs> there's a lot of guys though that don't want to talk on the phone. And so yeah. they're oftentimes texting to replace that communication. People, that, that, that is a, uh, it's a dangerous territory because tone is lost. Just, the, just the genuine body language reading right. is lost. It's harder like, to read. It's mm-hmm. harder to read. So now when you two in the future are together and you two can't figure out what's wrong with each other because y'all have never <laughs> established anything. <laughs> That's real, real, real dangerous. <laughs> like, like we should probably talk more. We should probably get in front of each other more, be around each other's friends a little more, see how you operate in certain... Because I could text you all day, but I could also hop on a messenger all day and talk to somebody else who gives me the same exact words that you're giving me. But if I'm in person, those words... They look a little different, yeah. or they, they feel. They do. A it different. makes a huge difference. It makes it makes a huge difference. So, um, yeah, uh, and also when it comes to my list of things, even though I don't really have one, it's just um, always wanting to learn a higher a higher uh, learning, like just wanting to. You want her to be inquisitive. Yeah, like ask me questions. Let's talk. I'm a space nerd, so like. If you want to, if I let, even if you're not interested, like you just, I can ask you something and you at least seem interested. It's like, okay, well, <laughs> I didn't know that, but I'm willing to learn. I'm a, I'm a huge space nerd. Ladies, I'm a, look, I'm a pretend, super space to nerd. Care, Pre- yeah, pretend to care, even if they're discussing something, pretend to care. You have no clue. It's going pretend above to care. your head, or it's the most boring thing on earth. Pretend to care. But it's been proven that even say I don't, for example, say I, cause I don't care about makeup. I don't care. Whatever. But say my the girl I'm seeing is a makeup artist. Mm-hmm. It's been proven that if this person starts to talk to me about the makeup, yeah, I may not feel. But if I inquire about it, there's something in there that I could probably relate to. Whether right. it's I, I'm like, okay, well, she's like, oh, well, I did this foundation on da 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 so and so. I'm like, all right, well, explain to me what foundation right. is. What so is I, that? What's the purpose of that? In that 
people don't realize when you bounce, that's how conversation works. Good like, job. Like we that bounce is so, it back and yep, forth. I love that you know that. Now it's like, it's a game okay, of ping pong. I didn't know that about that, but there's something in that answer that you just gave me that's also interesting to me now and now we like, went on a whole now i know thing. my white tees are getting messed you know what I'm up saying? Now I was like, oh, okay da, da, da. <laughs> but now and even within that it's like you know what well in my career i deal with so-and-so that's kind of related yep. to you and that's how you but people when you automatically shut it down and as like, oh. soon as they're not interested and yeah. it's like okay of course you got to realize you're two different people you come from two different walks of life you're not going to have the same interest in it Everything. And it's not that the person isn't interesting. You're just not interested. Yeah, How can you make it. yourself a little bit more interested? And you, that requires inquiry yeah. and discovery. And discovery. You got to take initiative and be like, you know what? I don't know about it, but hey. Let's figure it out. Let's let's see what we can, what I can get out of. And I'm very much like that. That's that's how I operate. You just did a video that I told you you posted earlier, which I yeah. know you're taking a social detox. Yes. But you did black men don't cheat. Yes. <laughs> there is this this myth out there that yeah. black men do cheat. Is that yeah. why you guys put that out there? Um, was well, more so that um, there's all there's I've had a lot of uh, different women from different races be like I haven't had one black woman was like sometimes I'm I'm afraid to date black men because I see the cheating rate so high and I'm just like first off number one he had to be purple because he wasn't black and black <laughs> men don't cheat uh, but it's just like. It's 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 wild that that notion is even out there like that. That is, and particularly for black men, I'm like, men are men at the end of the day. Black Indian, whatever, like men are men. But it's like we just wanted to push a, a funny narrative that would open up people's eyes and just also let people know that some people are just going to be the way. Like humans are humans. Yeah. Like whether they're black, white, whatever. Humans are humans. Everybody has their own path and the way they deal with things. And it's like, if this person and you don't know the trauma behind why this person does what, what they, they do, what they do, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, and a lot of t- like I've like talked to women who are chronic cheaters, <laughs> and I just be looking at them like, you did what? Right? And they be like, yeah, like Black this men- one girl told me that she hadn't been in a relationship that she hadn't cheated in yet. I said, okay, so I do know people like that. I, I, ha- said, I do wow. come across those, and I said, I ain't even cheated, and that's that's wild to me that you said you've that. never cheated on anybody. No, because that was my next question. Black men don't cheat, but do they commit? So. You said you have committed, but you don't yeah. cheat. No, I don't cheat. No. Um, Do black men commit, though? Because today's topic is about commitment. Do black men commit? Yes, they do. Because I know I know a, a bunch of black men, married black men. That, okay. That, yeah, I do. I I'm do married know. to one, so yeah, yes. Yeah, I do, I do know they, <laughs> they commit. Is it a little tougher now in 2019 with all the... It's tougher yeah, for every it's tougher than, ethnicity, yeah. species. Every, like. it's, tough, it's, tough for, it's tough for everybody. Also, you know, I've been battling with... I just thought about this. I meant to bring this up earlier. So one part of me is like we were put on this earth to find the one rib, that person that that takes us to whether we, whether we get people put a lot of pressure on marriage, whether you get married to this person or not, whether y'all could be life partners if yeah. you want to, whatever. Marriage is at the end of the day. It's what you two want if y'all want to. It's a government. It's paper, whatever. Cool. Or it's life partners and you may not go through the government. Y'all may just be like, you know what? You mine. We're I'm yours. We're committed forever. Yeah. We're here. Cool. One part of me believes that we're supposed to find that person. Then there's another part of me that is like, why is it that it's so hard for people to commit, whether men or women, but people, some people to commit? Is it because we're meant to be connected to multiple people. And I'm not, I don't even mean cheating. I I mean like openly discussing like, Hey, I'm with you and I'm also with you. That's mm-hmm. why they have, you know, poly relationship stuff like that. Yeah, is, polyamorous. is that the direction, you know, that, that I'm supposed to go? Is that, you know, I've, I've always, I've been thinking, especially now that I'm older, I've been thinking mm-hmm. about, do I need a woman who is maybe open and like, Maybe bisexual. Do I need a woman who's? Did you tell me you were meeting a lot of bisexual women? I have, lately? I okay. Have, and, I, and I don't know if that's because I've been manifesting, <laughs> Are you manifesting that in my mind. Bisexual women. Is that what, I was like, what you want? I was like, is you that, want a threesome? I was like, is that is that what it is? Like, and I don't even mean like. For example, I, I knew I knew a woman. She was like, listen, if we were to ever be together, here's here's my thing. She was like, I like women. 
She was like, I necessarily don't even like men, but I like, I mean, like other a bunch of other men. Mm-hmm. She was like, but in a relationship, she was like, I'm willing to, because I love my partner. And, and she was like, I'm willing to be open and honest about everything that I, that I want to do. If I find a woman attractive, I'll come to you and be like, hey, you know, this month I want to try this with this woman. And I'm like, okay. I was like, that doesn't sound bad. She was like, as long as the guy is very open with me and he can he can flirt, he can look at women. She was like, I don't have no problem with that. She was like, my thing is, I just want to be the most honest and transparent because there's a difference between honesty and transparency. Yes, there is. Honesty, you have to get asked something. Transparency, you just tell them. That's two different things. So she was like, if I had somebody who's transparent with me and also honest, I could do that because most of the time she said a lot of times guys mess it up. She was like, it's never like a lot of times I be with guys and I tell them the freedom that they have. Like, look, I love women. I love, and it's not even on like a special occasion thing. Like if we're out and about and me and you find someone attractive mm-hmm. and we both feeling it, let's, let's go for it. Okay. Let's, let's teamwork. She's like, but a lot of times guys take it and run with it and then start going behind my back. Wait, doing messing with other women that, with she other women that, that she didn't bring into the relationship. Those and weren't it, the terms of and, our agreement. And it's like, that sounds like something I could honestly I could I could rock with. That way me and you it's like we're best friends. We here together. And it's like, hey, look, we both are attracted to the same thing. Hey, maybe we can this month is like, hey, we're gonna go out, have fun, do our thing. Then you may not do it for two, three months and you might mm-hmm. come but I was like, there's nothing wrong with that. And I think it's a lot of like ill faces at people who do stuff like that. And it's like, yo, to every, each his own. Like, I mean, this does sound has, like a win-win situation for you. No, no. But, uh, <laughs> but here's my thing. It's and not, for her, because she gets like best of both worlds The woman to. has to, if, if the woman initiates it, then my, by all means, I don't go into it like, hey, uh, are you, uh, do you like women? Because I need this and I need that. No, no. If that's what she already likes and it's something a part of, I was like, I could see myself being a part of something like that. I'm very open and just honest with where I'm at right now because I'm still figuring out because I'm not committed to anyone. So in this time, I need to figure out when I do get, get committed, are there certain things yeah. I like? Because being in the industry that I am in, being a comedian, entertainer, whatever, I'm gonna be tempted a lot for You're sure. Be, what you're tempted now? I'm like, tempted now, and so I know it's gonna no double, triple when I get to that point. And I just want to make sure that whoever I'm with, I'm as open and as honest as I as I possibly can be. Because I'd rather leave you than to cheat on you. To be honest, and that's you. good that you said that. But commitment has to be one of your core values, and if it's not, you can't pretend. Yeah, for sure. As if it is for the other for sure. partner. Definitely. And so oftentimes we question, you know, well, if I, why did God make us capable of? having, you know, multiple children or, you know, having so much, you know, seed to spread or, you know, us being able to get impregnated, you know, by multiple people. If we're only supposed to be with one partner for the rest of our lives, if commitment is important to you, it's important to you. Mm -hmm. Part of my spiritual belief is that God gave us free will, but we're not supposed to have every single thing that we want. Anytime there's indulgence when we don't know how to control ourselves. (laughs) Yeah, it's too much. So I think that the same thing comes when it comes to relationships. If that's something that you were raised with, or that's, you know, part of your belief system, you have to honor that and operate from a place of, you know, self-regulation as much as possible. But if that's not one of your beliefs, you can't pretend for the other person. And now you're stepping out and yeah, I'd rather them just be honest. honest. Like if you you really don't want to commit, and that's that's where I am right now. I don't want to commit. That's what don't want to commit right now. Ladies, you heard him. Don't trying to hit him up and email me at info at the spicy life. Asking about it. Yeah, don't don't. If you're looking for a relationship, I'm not the guy right now, and I'm okay for saying that. Okay, I have a dear spicy for you. Yeah. Okay, so this is where you get to answer one of our listener letters, and it's dear spicy. I met a guy three months ago on line we've been dating steadily and seeing each other every one to two weeks we have a lot of interests and values in common and each date has been fun movies dinner hiking and more it's been a great experience so far but maybe not the fireworks and breathtaking romance story that harlequin novel set me up for i'm ready to commit and date this person exclusively but i'm not sure where he's at the question is how can i get him to want to commit to me and also add some romance and fireworks to the dating process xoxo uh, what is this? Oh, Mindering Along. <laughs> she didn't give me her name. <laughs> no. Okay, Roman's shaking his head. What is this? What is this? Shake, shake, shake. Read her question again. Her question is, how can I get or want him to commit and also add some romance and fireworks into the dating process? How can I get him to commit? That's that's where that's where the whole question went downhill because it's not happening like that. <laughs> it's not. It has to be an innate feeling from him 
to be like, this is what I want to do. You, to our point earlier, yeah. It's like, and I know y'all been having, you know, a decent time and all that stuff, but it, it it is what it is. Like, there's no there's no formula. I wouldn't even be able to answer that question. I wouldn't be able to say, well, this is what you should do yeah. to try to get him to commit unless you give him some type of serum that's going to make him commit. Like, but that doesn't even exist. So it's like, you can ask him, hey, this is, well, tell him, this is where I'm at right now. So be open and communicate be open, what you want. Open and communicate. This is where I'm at right now. I'm feeling you. I'm ready to commit and take this thing to the next level. Depending on what his answer is, that's that's where you know to go. To be honest, because like we said earlier, if a man wants to commit, he going to commit. And if he doesn't, if, if he tells you, no, I'm not ready, if you choose to stay around, that's fine. Because like you said, there are instances, like I said, people grow every day. Something could happen, but don't expect him in the next week to be like, all right, well, hey, look, uh, I'm still here. Like, yeah. you know I've seen saying? people wait three years to get no. the commitment. Oh, oh they wild. I've seen it. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, they have a new wilding. boyfriend now, but, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've seen them like wait long oh, no, for no, that no, title. No, no. Absolutely not. Um, so, yeah, I would tell her first. The, honestly, the only thing I could tell her is just be open and honest with where you're at and then see where it goes. And also, too, I'm going to add to that. So. We have this time clock in our minds of where we are at and where we think we should be and don't know the other person's time clock, Mm -hmm. nor even understand that some of the reason that you want to be in this committed or exclusive relationship is not because you actually want to be with this person because you're still discovering who this person is. Mm -hmm. It's more of you just want to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so if you haven't gotten to a place of really realizing and knowing why this person is good for you and why you're good for them. And the person showing you that you guys operate from the same core values or the same desires and beliefs. Now you're putting yourself in a situation where you want a cuddle buddy and you want an exclusive cuddle buddy, as Mm -hmm. opposed to this person's going to make me better. This person is going to help me reach self, you know, actualization and we're going to reach relationship actualization one day. Sometimes it's just, we have a missing piece in our life and we're trying to just put anybody in there that'll fit into that slice. You can't, you can't, that's what I tell people all the time. You can't, people think, oh, they're my other half. No, no, no. You can't go into it like that. You have to be a whole and then they have to be a whole and then y'all can make each other extra after that. But trying to go into a half, I'm 50, you're my 50, boom. But wait a minute, there was 50% of me missing before that I still haven't really They're filling a void. even figured out, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like going to it as a whole. So like, yeah, I mean, what you said is very, very true. Um, yeah. So I would just tell her, yeah, she got to be open and be community and, you know, figure out what she needs first and then, then go from there. Yeah. Why that. do you want the commitment? That's my question. Why do you want him? Yeah. yeah. Why do you want him? Yeah, yeah. I want to know. I would like really ask yourself. And does he want you? And if you don't know if he wants you, then like Rome said, you have to have that conversation yeah, with him conversation. because you don't want to continue lingering in something where you are going to be making more deposits than withdrawals. And this person gets all the withdrawals, all the benefits. And yeah. so you really have to assess where you are and if it's too soon. That's why I try to let stuff out in the beginning because one of my things I do not like hearing is what we doing or where are we or what, what are we? Like, I don't want to hear that. So I let you know from straight off the jump. Is where we at. Okay, so I was going to wrap the show, but now you have to address that. Okay. So <laughs> right. when a woman asks you, where are we? Or like, what what what's our status? Or what are we doing? You said that irritates you. Not necessarily. It irritates me if I've already told you where okay. we're at. And you, you still wanted to continue. It's like, all right, cool. Well, you can't ask me. Enter at your and, own risk. Yeah, enter at your much own saying. risk. But also, dudes, and we are very guilty of this. We do a lot of relationship stuff. With, right. With you the go girl. through the motions without the, the commitment. Motions, without a commitment. And that's why you gotta you can't you can't do that either. Like you can't be up late night, you know, da da da, or every time she call you can't be there or every time like you really gotta set boundaries so if you that's intentionally what you want to do. miss message. You intentionally say no to invites. No, no, because I tell them straight up from jump. I literally I'm very I'm very upfront, like, hey, this is where I'm at, this is what I'm doing. And I, I don't really want to do the relationship stuff. I'm down with being your friend. I'm down with, like, kicking it. If that's not what you're looking for, this is not where you want to be. And that's just a, how I lay it out now. But that doesn't mean I can't go out on dates. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, like, I can go out on a date and maybe maybe there's something I see, like, all right, this person is meeting me kind of where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. This, this person is kind of, they understand where I'm at. They see where I'm at. 
And then whether whether girls married, that's 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 where it's at. So okay, so we got yeah. all the naked truth yeah. on today's oh, yeah, episode life. from Rome, ladies. You guys got like these questions answered. Some of the things that are burning within deep desire. I know that you guys are oftentimes looking for a commitment, but when a man tells you that he does not want a commitment and he's going through the motions. You need to go based off of his actions and words mm -hmm. both matching. And if he's mm -hmm. not doing that, run. Yeah. Or at least I say build your team. Keep your options open. Do not put all your eggs in one basket. Uh oh, teamwork <laughs> made the dream I'm work. All about the team. Hey. Rome, let everybody know where they can find you. All right. Um, I will be back on social soon, but I mean I got a lot of stuff up there, but definitely follow me on Instagram at I roam a lot. That's I R O M E. A L O T. Follow my group at Dormtainment, like Dorm Room and Entertainment together. On Snapchat is Rome Green Jr. On Twitter is at I Rome a lot as well. All of these. Uh, all, all of these. <laughs> the, all the all the I mean IG is the is the main one. Um so, but you're, so you if you took send a detox, me a, though. Yeah. So if you send me a DM, I'm not gonna see it for probably another twenty days or so. <laughs> if and honestly for business stuff, you can hit me at Rome Green Jr. at dormtainment.com and Okay, you know, and you guys out. can always play with my Twitter or stroke my Instagram at Spicy Mati. Follow us at The Spicy Life as well. Go to thespicylife.com. And if you have any questions and you want to ask Dear Spicy and always ask our guests, it's info at thespicylife.com as well. And there you guys have it. 